On uh, November the 21st, uh, Muhammad Ali fights light heavyweight champion Bob Foster out in Lake Tahoe, Nevada. Um, he's a charming individual. Uh, the more you meet Muhammad Ali, uh, the more you like him. Would you welcome, please, the champion, Muhammad, or former champion? How do you introduce him? The champion. The champion. The champion. Yeah. The champion. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I feel it. Did I ever tell you, maybe I told you this. I used to fight. Did you know anything in the Navy? No, I didn't. I used to box. You're, you're choked up about that, aren't you? <laughs> no, no, no. I did. I weighed 140 pounds. That would make me what? A uh... welterweight, I think. Welterweight. And I had about nine fights in the Navy. Is that right? Well, you must have been pretty good because I don't see no marks on you or nothing. Well, I don't see many marks on you either. Well, I'm pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I remember I was about 18, and I had about seven fights, and everything went fine. And I remember on the eighth fight, I fought a fellow who was about your age, about 28. You're 28 now? 30. Are you 30 already? Yeah, time fly. You're pretty old for a fighter, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, generally you're speaking. Right, yeah. Plus, I've been boxing now 17 years, so I'm a little tired, too. Yeah. Well, I remember this fellow was 28 years of age, and that's when they say you're about at your peak of strength at about right. 28. And he gave me a, a belting around, and I said, this is not a way you know, to have fun. And I said, go out and get on a little pony and ride a pony or something. And I retired. That was it, right there. Now, you're going to fight Bob Foster, November the 21st. Lake Tahoe, right? Nevada, yes. Right. Out in some hotel out there. The Sahara Tahoe. Right, yes. It's yeah. real unusual, being such a big fight. Uh, I think they only hold a few thousand people, not over 3,000. It's going to be held in one of the uh, Convention. dining rooms or something, yes. That is kind of unusual. Well, it's a great hotel out there, though. Right. It's going yeah. to be really something, you know, usually when an arena holds 15,000 people outside waiting for fights like this, it's right. going to be something to see just a few thousand, two or three thousand people. Will this be know. televised at all? Right, right. It'll be uh, not on television, not like Joe Frazier's fights on home television. Right. Now you have, have to pay, you have to go to closed circuit the aids to sell. Oh, I see. Good thinking, good thinking. Didn't, when you were an amateur, didn't Bob Foster deck you once? Right, once as an amateur. How did they get out? Who told you? I, we check into these things. We check into these probably things. Probably the agitating promoters to draw up the ticket sales. Uh, he knocked me down when I was an amateur, training in Fort Dix, New Jersey, for the uh, Olympics right. in Rome. And he's been living on that reputation ever since. <laughs> well, does he, does he still have a punch like that? I mean, what happens yes, if he... Yes, he's still, he's, the, it's funny, I'm, I'm always knocked down by left hooks whenever I do go. Joe Frazier, uh, uh, Henry Cooper in England, yeah. and Alan left Hudson hooks, huh? in the Olympics, yes, and he's a good left hooker, so they're hmm. relying on that. Let me, uh, let me sell something here, then we'll come back and... Are you in good shape this fight? Pretty good. Okay. What do you do when your nose is all stuffed up from a cold? <laughs> Watch this. We are back. We're talking with uh, Muhammad Ali, who fights Bob Foster, November the 21st. One thing I want to ask you about, the altitude out at Lake Tahoe is something around 7,000 feet, maybe right. a few feet over. And a lot, of, a lot of performers who go there find that they have to take oxygen in between uh, right. their engagements. I, I, you have you thought about, about these, that? You hear about these things. It's hard to believe that you can go somewhere and you can't breathe, you know, or you have trouble breathing. But we went about oh, two weeks ago to sign a contract, and I caught myself running up stairs because the elevator took a little too long. Right. And I caught myself gasping for breath, and it worried me a little. Are you going to go out there a little bit earlier to I'm get leaving. acclimated? I'll or? be out there tomorrow evening late, and uh, <clears throat> I'll believe I can be ready. Yeah, because that is, that is a factor. He's uh, already there. He's smart, Bobby Foster. He's already there? He's been there on five days now. Doesn't that bother you, that he's uh, been there five days? Mm, not really, but um, I believe I can make it. You don't sound as positive as you <laughs> usually are, Mohammed. Well, I, I, I feel it. I don't always express it, but I feel it. But you're, you're going you're gonna to take him. Right. When are you and Joe Frazier going to meet again? He I don't know. He's getting ready to fight George Fulman, the number That's what I hear. two contender, I understand, in Jamaica. And I hope it comes off. He's been idle so long. I think if he really fights him, it'll make up for all his idleness. Yeah. So uh, after that, we'll probably meet for sure. Right. Do you still think, didn't you term Joe Frazier once a no-class street fighter? A no-class street fighter? No. Didn't you say that about him? No. You didn't? Not those words. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, was, what was the exact terminology? 
Uh, he's a good fighter. I mean, a rough fighter, not skillful, not scientific. Takes a lot of punishment, but he keeps coming. Takes a lot of whipping, but he keeps coming until you get tired of whipping. <laughs> then he catches up with you. But you think you're going to meet him again eventually? Well, I'm positive we are, yes. Right. I wanted to ask you about this. I saw oh, this backstage yes, this is is hanging a, there. This is very beautiful. I wonder if the cameras can get the yeah, get, get a shot of that. This Bob. comes from uh, Curacao in Aruba. I was there about uh, probably um, a year, <coughs> two years ago. Right. And the people of Curacao in Aruba, they sent this to me today. From one of you the just government today? representatives, yes, right behind stage. And That's very is, good. That's good looking. This is Zim Muhammad Ali with a star and a crescent Fair under the bottom. And small pair of boxing gloves. Um, made out of real gold and diamonds, yes, and they just gave it to me. And I was down there on the vacation, and I promised the people that I'm going to take my family back. And anybody, if I advise them, if they ever take any uh, trips over there, it's nice. That's yeah, Curacao that's, that's in Aruba. I've been there. It's pretty, pretty island. Somebody told me you had some land there. I did have, and I still still do in Curacao. Right, because I met a fellow there, boxing exhibition, and he mentioned, I know Johnny Carson, and he mentioned that you had some land there. Yeah. Like to buy a little lot? No. <laughs> Do a little real estate trading on the side. Right. Have you, uh, as you know, a lot of fighters, and the great fighters, sometimes later in life after they retired, have not ended up in the best financial right. condition at all, like Bo Jack, I think. Right. The great fighter is a shoe shine, shining shoes somewhere down in Florida. And it, it's happened to a great many fighters. Uh, you're not going to yeah. let that happen to I'll you, I'll tell you one thing. I'm glad you brought that up. But that's true, isn't it? Yes, but not, they, they were quick to talk about Joe Lewis or Sugar Ray or they talk about Bo Jack or whoever. Uh, but what I don't understand is why is it that a boxer can be a great boxer and he's not a college degree person. It's understood he's just a great boxer. And he cannot watch his money. He cannot watch his accountants. He cannot watch his lawyers or his managers. Half of them are crooked and conniving. He cannot train and watch all this, too, plus he didn't go to school for it. They did. He can make a bad investment or two, or something can happen. He can end up later a guard in some factory. And they say, ain't it terrible that Joe Lewis made so much money? Or ain't it terrible that Bojack made no so much money? But his managers, whoever they were, they're not, they don't know them. But yet and still, like, uh, what airline is this? Boeing Airline and, and uh, I was in uh, Canada the other day, and uh, people jump out of windows in the stock market. And I mean, these are white people who are big in business with lawyers and firms, make bad investments, and they go broke. But they always remember the name Joe Lewis, always remember Bojack. But all of these wise, wise, even America, understand, is broke. The Catholic schools and all kind of people need money, and they're broke. But how did they get broke? Well, I think, I think the, reason, the reason people remember people like Joe Lewis and Bojack is because they were in the public eye. They were right. celebrities. Yes, but a big airline or a big church or a big country right. are more in the public than a little boxer. So, but what, I'm, what, like, what you're saying is right, and I found out because they have li many of people, not only boxers, but entertainers and jazz musicians, white, black, all people, many of them end up, you know, not doing right because they don't realize that they're going to once get old and they live too big and they buy things they really don't need and they don't keep check and double check and record on everybody. And you do that? Oh, I have accountants and everybody checking everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. That's all I meant. That's all I meant. <laughs> Get an accountant to check I'm the account. I'm not accountant. predicting how I'm going to end up, but it won't be because I wasn't watching. And I have a, <laughs> plus I have a, I have a, I have, I'm lucky because Herbert Muhammad, uh, my manager, mm -hmm. uh, is a, is a, the best in the history of all boxing. I mean, like, we have no trouble. It's just the people around us that we have to watch who don't mean no harm, I'm sure. Right. But it's, they might make a mistake one day and overlook something. Well, let's say now, you're, you're 30. I didn't realize you were 30 already. You know, I was talking about age. I remember I used to watch your show, but your hair is getting gray. <laughs> you know, I used to watch you. No kidding. When you come on the show now, you know, it, it looked like you didn't die that, did you? That no, right? no, this is, this is, Real? this is it. I remember when you had dark hair and your face looks the same and your features, but you look distinguished now. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> You're 30 years old. How, how much longer do you, you think you can fight and be effective? And then what, what are you looking for after that? Well, I just built a training camp in Deer Lake, Pennsylvania. A 60 by 60 log cabin gymnasium, a 
big log cabin restaurant and two bunk houses right on the mountains. It's right. real pretty, about 20 miles out of Redding, Pennsylvania on Highway 61 North. And I, that's going to keep me going probably maybe another year or two. I'm, I really don't know. Probably after Joe Fage, I'm finished. But uh, uh, I'm on my college tour. You know, Richard, that's right. You know, Richard I do Fulton, that. my uh, great, great college agent, he keeps me booked in colleges. And I don't know, between my manager and Richard Fulton, I don't know who keeps me the business because I have like 37 college engagements waiting for me now if I want them, and it's impossible to take them and do the foreign exhibition tours that we have throughout Okinawa, Japan, Pakistan, wow. and Australia. And, uh, That's great. I know you like that too, don't you? The well, I like stuff. the idea of meeting the people in new countries and going places, although we're not fighting, man. We get a chance to see them. <clears throat> but what I plan to do, answering your question after I'm through boxing, is just do all I can with our people, the black people. We have problems that only we can solve. No male can solve them, no politician, no president, no governor. Problems that we have to solve among ourselves and talking to and teaching our own people, unity and discipline and respect of self before others respect us. And I have a lot to do among the 30 million people that we have here in America, representing our religious leader and teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who's doing a great job in I heard the mayor talking about how much crime we have across the country. Well, our leader, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, once a black man accepts the Islamic teachings, he quits smoking, he quits drinking, fornicating, adultery, throws his pistol down, and he cleans himself up, and he tries to uh, be a respectable citizen and uh, be a man and get respect from others as well as himself. So this is a great job that he's doing, our leader and that I would like to help him to do as soon as I'm through boxing. Because as you know, in this country, a black athlete or entertainer has a lot of influence. Some of them promote <coughs> ruskets, some of them make movies, nude scenes with women, and some of them take their fame to promote maybe some type of whiskey or some rock and roll record. But I'd like to do all I can <clears throat> to uplift the people morally and spiritually and as far as loving self and sticking together and helping self before um, expecting others to help them and respect them when they don't respect themselves. So this is what I want to do. Well, having known you as long as I do, I don't know anybody else who's better qualified to do that than you. Thank and you. I know you mean it. Thank you. Okay, we will, uh, we'll take a brief pause and we'll be right back. This is some drink. Lipton cup of soup. It tastes great. And easy. Look, open up an envelope in this cup Add some boiling water. And honestly, that's it. Real chicken noodle soup with hunks of chicken, enriched noodles, and parsley. Now, you'll want all the flavors. Tomato, green pea, onion, beef-flavored noodle. Because cup of soup tastes great any time or any place you go, wherever there's boiling water. Real soup you make right in the cup instantly. Lipton cup of soup to the festival. Look, I know you have to run, but I want to ask you, do you want to make a prediction? You haven't done any predicting for a while. Yes, I, I first became popular when I first started boxing 10 years ago as a professional, 12 years ago, at calling exact rounds. And out of about 35 fights, I predicted 17 fights, and 13, I predicted the exact round. All right. I haven't done it for a while. Okay, go ahead. So I have a feeling. All right. Uh, I've been running like eight miles every morning. And I like when I really eat, I can eat like eight scrambled eggs. And mm -hmm. I train at eight o'clock in the evenings. Uh -huh. And usually I try to be through my daily activities at eight o'clock at night. And some just tells me Foster's gonna fall in the eighth round. That makes sense. All righty. Okay. Eight. 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 Eight it is. Take care. Take care. Eight.